I'm going to showcase this particular research paper for far different reasons than what I typically showcase a paper for. This paper is called Schema Agent, a, a multi-agents framework for generating relational database schema. This paper caught my eye very specifically because it's dealing with um, relational databases and then like agents behind that. Typically, I would just pass over agent papers, but uh, they're doing a unique use case for it. And then so it caught my eye. And then you can see they've got nice diagrams, a nice abstract. The paper looks nice overall, right? It's very straightforward, but I can tell you that uh, within this paper, I can show and utilize this paper to 100% prove to you that we have hit a, a insurmountable wall when it comes to AI agent research is the bottom line. Like I keep trying to tell people this in different ways, and I've been trying to tell people this for a few years now, right? Uh, and the um, research keeps backing me up, right? Um, every single time that there's like a Devon that gets hyped or something like that, I, I was huge. Like I was very anti Devon when it first came out. I was, I spoke out about how much of like harm that was going to do to the industry overall. Um, and then like here we are, right? And it's because, um, it, I, it, like, you have to approve something at the end of the day, right? And then at the uh, given a long enough time frame, you have to prove out what you can actually do. <laughs> and when it comes to agents, no one can do it, right? It's the like, uh, and then this like is very simple to me, right? Go to so any agent paper that you do, anything that they're hyping up, anything else, right? None of it matters except for here. Here's their experimental results, and the important thing to highlight: these are their experimental results, right? This is them setting up the experiment and the best possible way that they can and then so they run these experiments uh, i'm assuming until they can get like good results out of it right <laughs> and then the results that they're getting here within um this th these are laughable results first of all uh and then second that they, they're uh within the margin of error and every single one of them uh, but then most importantly, there's one in particular where the baseline GPT 3.5 turbo model is beating out their method. <laughs> like, uh, it, it flat out just like out, out, outperforms, um, what they're trying to do within this, just the baseline GPT 3.5. Uh, and then when you look at, uh, like, this, for example, so they're there. Um, the, if you one shot a GPT 3.5, it gets a score of 86.13. They improve it to 86.65. Um, and then so like a, like 4% that uh, a three, sorry, 3.5% on uh, GPT 4.0 on that same benchmark. So like a little bit more on that and a little bit higher. Uh, but then, um, and then we get like, a, we'll call it like 2.5% on uh, DeepSeek. But uh, literally, like it's, uh, I mean, like within the statistical margin of error for um, the uh, GPT 3.5 in terms of performance, right? Like utilizing this method, throwing everything that they're doing, paying these guys money will get you a 0.5% uh, increase on your F1 score. Uh, and then a few points of accuracy increase, which again, like, uh, so you're talking about like one or two like questions on that. And then they're, they're running these tests until like they get these results. Right. So I, I guarantee you, if you, uh, run or benchmark these tests, you're going to get either like the, the problematic thing with this is that it's very possible that you're going to get worse results than the baseline just by running your simple tests, right? Like that's what these test results are showing me is that it is 100% very possible that this could actually be detrimental uh, overall. Like you would be doing yourself a disservice by utilizing this framework as opposed to a base GPT 3.5 turbo according to these metrics that they're putting out. Cause again, these are like the very, very best case scenario possible that they're putting out. And the very best case scenario possible that they can put out is that they beat 
GPT 3.5 by 0.5 percent, uh, like uh, literally 0.5 on the F1 uh, test, and then they're losing on the foreign key accuracy test, which is crazy overall, right? But so there it is, right? Like there's no secret sauce, there's no formula, there's no secret technology that is being hidden in some sort of bunker related to uh, agent technology very specifically, right? This is all geared towards agent technology. Like we have very much hit the limitations of agents and transformers. <laughs> like that's kind of the bottom line within this, right? I mean, that's where all of the money has gone, where all of the investment has gone. Uh, and then we can see like these companies, like there's not um, any secret sauce that anyone has baked into these things that anyone else is able to overcome. Uh, as you can see from these types of benchmarks, right? There's no, uh, I, like, I don't know, there's no, like, there's nothing else to be added onto this, right? It's already been baked into the models because, like, this has been a problem that, that everyone has wanted to solve for two plus years, right? This has been, like, the problem that uh, I has, uh, a lot of people have staked their reputations on that they can solve um, overall. Uh, and then here we are, right? And then so... I don't know, like, uh, bottom line, I would say is if you're dealing with anybody, like, and you're, like, uh, interested in agents, just, I mean, ask them, like, for, like, actual real-world benchmark tests, right? Like, give me, like, real-world results, show me benchmark tests like this, uh, and then show me, like, actual examples of the framework uh, and then where it fails, right? Ask, like, ask them, like, I think that's the number one question. Like, what's the, like, how often will your model, like, will your agent framework fail? And if they say anything, like, it's uh, better than 80 percent they're lying like uh whatsoever there there's nothing on the planet that will like no uh agent framework on the planet um that will get uh higher than that and you can see so this is these accuracy scores are 55 percent right this is 55 percent accuracy uh, that we're talking about here right and then so like we can't and 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 two and a half, three years, we haven't been able to move the needle in considerable ways past this 55% accuracy. I'm, I'm not making this up, right? 55, 59, 55. These are like, this is uh, as high as it's going in terms of accuracy. And it gets worse on some like 36, 36, 38, right? And then um, there's also like um, benchmark pollution within this. Like these accuracy numbers are overinflated. Like they shouldn't actually be as high as they are. They should actually be quite lower. Um, and then so you're paying for an agent product with 50% accuracy or lower and no one on like no one that is selling you that can actually promise you that it's going to be better than that. Like I, I don't understand why anyone on the planet would actually want that in a production org. Um, there's a like uh, Netflix has a, a product they call Chaos Monkey, right? Where they like throw their engineering team and they just like purposely break stuff randomly uh, within their organization in order to keep their engineering team on their toes. Uh, like that's what you're doing. Like, you're just like installing Chaos Monkey into your organization for no reason, right? You're like that's anyone that goes through this step. Your uh, your engineering team is dealing with Chaos Monkey, uh, like uh, fifty like. F 45% of the time or so, uh, that's very high, right? And then it, whatever task that you're automating, they have to go through and fix those 45% of the errors, which is going to then likely take up more time and money than the 45, the 55% of the time that it's actually working and saving you the time for. Um, so overall, I can't say this enough, right? I've been saying this for years. Um, I don't put marketing dollars behind it, which is kind of the big problem, right? Like anyone that um, invests money, <laughs> that all of a sudden they they uh, can take over like any sort of like social media voice. Like Devin is the biggest one, right? Like I, I was, was like, I saw that happen immediately uh, and, and was like, um, knew that it was going to set essentially us back now, like where we are, right? Again, like you can only say these things for so long that like uh, agents are going to happen. Agents are going to happen. It's been two plus years and then it's going to be three plus years. And then people are going to realize that like there's like this framework overall, like the transformers framework is the bottleneck within this. Um, that's the, the bottom line. Like I, I, I no amount of wishing will change that. Um, 
Transformers architecture definitely has a good place and it has, you know, value within it. Like there's things that it can do, but realizing the limitations of this technology, uh, it, it, it like is the most important step, right? Like to me, it's not like um, doom saying or being in one camp or another. It's speaking uh like a pure science, pure physics, and, and like actually talking about the technology uh, as technology itself, right? Realizing that it has limitations. It's not just a magic box and, and just magic performance um, and just hyping it up is going to get you across the finish line, right? It's not going to work in this instance. Um, the uh, What you are hyping up doesn't work. <laughs> like it's you're hyping snake oil. Uh, and then people are going to get mad over it, uh, given an, a long enough time frame, which is like why I'm, I've been hugely against agents overall. Right? I, I don't want a bunch of people mad at me. So uh, overall, here's another disappointing research paper. Uh, schema agent, a multi-agents framework for generating relational database schema. Uh, if you like this type of content overall, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.